Uh, welcome back. So, um, I just before I start, I just want to share some information with you. Um, so, I was trying to connect uh, to my uh, uh, test SP6000 that is running the latest firm firmware, which is uh, 7.14. Uh, I tried to log in uh, to it with uh, with the wind load um, that I have here um, and it wouldn't let me, it would say um, invalid um, panel ID and password and I tried everything, I verified with the keypad that, the, uh, that I was using the correct um, panel ID and password and it still still wouldn't let me in so I had to get uh, I had to get this latest um, infield software to downgrade it to the latest version supported by uh, Winload which is 4.94 so I had to downgrade down and uh, <clears throat> then I was able to log in uh, so let's uh, go back to um, Winload so we can finish the tutorial so uh, master one, two, three, four. So at this point, I assume that you already, uh, you've already seen part one of the tutorial. So you have um, downloaded and installed your software and set it up for the COM port that uh, that you have. <coughs> so I'm going to create a new account. Like I said, you can use this icon or you can click accounts and new. So we'll click here. Okay, so account number, this is typically the account number that you have with your monitoring station. It's, it's just something that you, um, that you use to, uh, to uh, sort. So when you have 100 accounts, you can sort by account number and then find it easy, easier. So I'm going to put 1, 2, 3, 4, for example. I'll put test. This is just any number. Uh, I'm not using... Uh, uh, I'm not logging in, I'm not dialing in with the phone line, but if you were, you would put your phone line here, and then you would put your panel ID and password here. Um, <clears throat> uh, for the phone line, you would click on answering machine, so, and then you would set this to three or maybe six, it's up to you, you have to, you have to try. Um, <clears throat> Uh, of course, with uh, some commercial uh, sites, they have a fax machine, and the fax machine is set up to um, to answer right away uh, after the first ring. So, if that's the case, you will. Uh, unfortunately, the only way to log in is to ask them to disconnect the fax machine until you are done. Otherwise, if they have a fa an answering machine, for example, or even if it's a fax machine that is set up to answer after uh, three rings, then when you enable this option, it will dial once, it will hang up uh, right away, like as, as soon as the phone starts to ring, it will disconnect and then dial again. So on the next dial, the answering the the uh, alarm panel will pick up right away because it's expecting that someone is um, is trying to dial into it. Um, uh, this uh, mo modem response option, um, you will have to experiment with this. Unfortunately, with phone line, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, some I, I noticed with uh, newer panels. Uh, you always, or not always, but you sometimes have to put it all the way down, or you know, experiment with these sessions and keep try with these settings and keep trying until it answers. With uh, surprisingly, with older panels like the 1738, uh, I have to set it to a faster uh, modem response um, so I can log in. So in my case here, I'm not dialing through a phone line, so I'm dialing with the um, with the direct cable. So I'm going to select here. I can press F6 or set um, a direct cable connection and then click connect. Also, so for this panel ID, because my panel um, doesn't have an ID like the ID is uh, 0000 and uh, like four zeros and password is four zeros. So some sometimes you have like when this is not set, so sometimes you have to put zeros or you leave it blank. But just so you know, but usually you you, you don't leave this empty, so you shouldn't run into issues. So uh, connect. 
So now it's trying to open the, the port. Uh, wrong panel identifier. This is what I was talking about. So let's try without the zeros. Okay, when it does that, let's see. So I'm going to exit. I won't save. I will delete this account. Okay, I will delete, go to deleted, permanently delete, and let's try to set it up again. So, new, one, two, three, four, test, and then let's put this to direct, connect. Wrong panel identifier. So, Let's go back here and then you'll see that it's uh, waiting for me to pick up a panel. So I know it's an SP6000, so I select SP and then it's SP6000 and the latest version is 4.9, so click OK. And then let's see if we can get in. So this is what I'm saying when I, when I say it's a buggy software. It's... Um, Let's see, uh, put zeros, okay, connect, and there you go. So I had, I basically had to set up the panel, like choose which panel it is in the first time and then try again. Um, <clears throat> So I used to have the K32 connected, now I don't, that's why it, it sees it. I can, um, it, I really need to do a module scan, but um, yeah, so now once you're logged in, uh, you can click on this to, to open the programming sheets. Um, this is to insert a device or delete a device. Um, this is usually use this, um, like you, the panel will detect what you have installed, so you don't really need this. Or so you can either uh, highlight the panel and select this, or you can double click on the panel, and these are your zones. So um, there's quite a bit of options here. So uh, you can s define your zones. So let's say zone one is an entry delay; it's a it's an entry door, and then you can label the zone here, so front door, for example. And then um, you can select which partition, you can select which input the, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, the door is on. Um, so it's a panel input, so it's, uh, it's directly connected to the panel. Uh, let's say zone 2 is a motion, for example. So I put this to motion. Okay, and then it's partition one, and then input two, it's wired to input two. Um, yeah, it's a follow zone. Uh, zone three, let's say I have um, an instant door on a, or a, an instant, like a, a garage door, for example, or, or, a, or a, lo a side door, let's say side door, okay. Of course, what we're doing here has to has to match what you have wired in in real life. I'm not you're, you don't just select anything at random. So instead, I have on my keypad, um, I have um, a, a sensor connected, so I can go here and uh, MG10 assign this yes. Okay, so and then let's go to zone nine. Okay, so zone nine. Ah, okay, that's why. I, okay, that's why. So, if I wanted to put it in zone three, I would delete this, and then go back to zone three. Okay, and then uh, put this to instant, and then here it's a side door. Okay, and then 
select the MG select the uh, the keypad ID so th these are the two keypads that I have so um, uh, the uh, K10H is is this I believe let's see K10H yes this is it so I select it and then once I'm done um, that's done I, I'm done with this uh, programming the the two zones that I have on the system so I can see here it says PC to panel or panel to PC so you click like this to send from the PC to panel and then I'm, I only want to send the current page uh, then click send and now my zones should be programmed once they are programmed they're all the reds are gonna go away so if you're doing multiple changes on all the pages uh, then you would need to um, to select all pages but because I only programmed one page um, uh, I only select current page uh, here you can uh, if the panel time is off you can click this to uh, to set the time um, this if you want the panel to have the default values so here um, I'm having a, like there's a sort of a problem here so we can leave this we can leave this for now um, I'm just showing you the process this is how how it's done uh, we'll come back to this later so um, let's leave this uh, um, page for now and let's go to monitoring so monitoring here it shows you the panel status so here you have the uh, the AC power so this is gonna change a little bit it shouldn't it shouldn't change much it shows the voltages the DC volt is 14 volts the battery is 10.5 I actually don't have any batteries connected um, here you see all the three zones that I programmed um, you see them here if you click show zone location then it will show you the name rather than the status so uh, zone one is closed zones two and three are open if you see trouble in red it means you have trouble so you click on trouble and then it shows you uh, what the troubles are on the system so here it's low battery on control panel uh, keypad bus so we click here and then you will see that uh, the second one is missing so that's uh, that's my my trouble here you click cancel um, memory if you have an alarm in memory it will show here um, uh, PGM it shows the PGM status uh, we'll, we can look at into these later um, event list uh, so if you have if you have a customer that is complaining from uh, something went off uh, and you want like sometimes we uh, we get a phone call that uh, oh my alarm is beeping and um, and it, it's actually not the alarm that is beeping you have they have they have a standalone um, carbon monoxide detector that is unrelated to our system in any way so you can log into the panel and see if it detected something so you go here in this page and then you click get events and then you click get all new events so and then you download if you if you click stop then the next time it's not you're not going to be able to use all new uh, then you have to use all event buffer because uh, like let me show you so like this it will download whatever it was able to download then the next time you'll show zeros there, mar there, there might be more because I I cancelled mid midway so I would have to do download all event buffer to get the rest of the events so try not to cancel whatever you choose uh, try not, not to cancel otherwise you would have to download all event buffer uh, when you're downloading using the serial port or IP it's not a big deal but if, if you're doing this over the phone uh, it could be it could take an hour or more so keep that in mind 
Okay, so now we can go back to system. Um, we double click, and then the next thing is timings. So um, here you can set up. You see here, uh, it shows it shows seven, ten, seven, eleven. So these are the section numbers on um, uh, in the manual. So I'll show you something that you might be able to relate to. So in communicator here, I have section nine ten and section nine eleven. These are my panel ID and password. So this way, like WinLoad is nice in this feature, is that you can easily find the section. You you can easily tell for sure that this section is this thing on the on the uh, in the manual. So that makes it easy. This is what I was referring to in my um, part one. So um, I will stop at this for this part and see you in the next one.